Oh, good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for the APDA for the organization of that uh, excellent symposium. I think we're all having uh, great lectures and hopefully you are learning a lot about uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, I'm also realized I'm between you and your lunch. So, <laughs> so, but we'll see what we can do with time. So just to start, uh, uh, why we call it Parkinson's disease? Well, James Parkinson's described this condition uh, back on 1817. And then he uh, wrote a, a, a paper uh, uh, describing I mean, features of patients that have the same symptoms, tremors, slowness, stiffness, and walking problems. Uh, but it took uh, around 150 years since James Parkinson described this condition in 1917 for uh, another gentleman, George Kotsias, to discover that, in fact, the problem uh, will be solved if you will give these patients dopamine. And then since you cannot take dopamine by mouth because it will be destroying the stomach. So he came with the idea of giving levodopa, which is a compound that is transformed. It can be given by the mouth and it's transforming the brain into dopamine. But look, look, took 150 years for that discovery. So already Dr. Hack went through what is Parkinson's disease, but just as an overview, again, it's a condition on which these cells that make dopamine gradually die. And these uh, uh, cells usually make a, 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 this important substance called dopamine. And dopamine equals movement. Less dopamine, less movement, more dopamine, sometimes excess of movement. So, and then he already went to what to do with the patients at the beginning. Uh, uh, sometimes when the Parkinson symptoms are so mild, you decide not to treat, just observe the patient because the symptoms are no bothersome for the patient. Sometimes we offer participation in clinical trials and I really encourage you to participate and be part of clinical trials. That's the only thing that is gonna move the field and is gonna benefit everybody. Uh, but sometimes when the symptoms are intense uh, and bothersome and they affect your life, your quality of life, well, treatments appear. And uh, Dr. Hack already talked about some of what we call low potency medications like uh, rasagilin, selegilin, amantadine, ropirinol, pramipexol, the patch, uh, the rotigotin patch or nupro patch. But the best, the best medication we do have is carbidopa lipodopa. It's still invented on the 60s, discovered on the 60s. It's still now, 2022, the best medication for the patient. So, and uh, can we slow down Parkinson's disease? That will be the other question. Doctor, rather than giving me pills to treat my symptoms, can you give me something to slow down that condition? Well, Emily was already talking about uh, after the nice lecture on exercise, but do we have medications that really may slow down? Well, there are multiple efforts done over the years and you can see, I don't want you to read the whole thing, but it's like just to go uh, and, and see how many failures we have, how, low, uh, how many medications we try before uh, uh, that are complete failures. Some of them is still in doubt and some of them uh, on the right side under investigation including medication that look like vaccines that may block chemicals that accumulate on the cells of, uh, on the neurons that are dying from Parkinson's called synuclein. So these substances or vaccines that will block the synuclein may potentially improve the condition, especially uh, also for patients that have specific genes that are producing the Parkinson. These are not the majority, are the minority, maybe 10%, 5 10% of the people with Parkinson may have certain genes. There are now being developed medications that may help slow down Parkinson on that population. So kind of customized medications. Of course, you will need to know if you have some of those genes. And that's another story. And there are trials that can help in that. So levodopa is complex because it has to go from your mouth to your brain. And in order to do that, it has to pass through the GI tract. And already Dr. Hack talked that the protein, for example, may interfere that step. Uh, and also on a way on the blood, that, dopa, that levodopa is attacked by substances called enzymes trying to reach the brain. And then we also give medication that can help the situation. One of them is carbidopa. That's why your medication is carbidopa levodopa. Levodopa is the good one. And carbidopa kind of clears the way for the levodopa to go and reach the brain. Uh, if we don't have carbidopa, you will have a lot of nausea, for example, from levodopa. And that's why the medication is called Cinemet. Sin means without, emet means nausea. So it's without nausea. That's why they put that name. 
So, and then when the levodopa goes to the brain, it, it gets absorbed into the neurons that are gonna make dopamine from it. And then, then the medication is gonna be released and it's gonna work on some structures called receptors, dopamine receptors that are gonna send these messages to the brain to move, to move, to speed up your movement, to make you move faster. So there are a lot of areas in which you can intervene in patients that have lack of dopamine to increase the dopamine. For example, dopamine is destroyed, not naturally on the brain. So if you block that destruction with substances, then you can increase your dopamine. For example, you can also stimulate directly the dopamine receptor with something called dopamine agonist that Dr. Hag was also uh, talking about. So, but no matter what you do, uh, you may progress. And then at the beginning, when we diagnose Parkinson's, let's say here, we pass uh, and we give the patient the carbidopa, levodopa, he passed a period of what we call honeymoon. Everything is beauty, everything is fantastic, medication is working fantastic. Uh, and it lasts maybe six hours, seven hours, and you don't feel off, on, nothing. You are always good. But then after a few years, you may have this period called motor complications period on which you start having, you feel that the medication kick in and the medications wears off. And you start saying, doctor, doctor, medication used to last five, six hours. Now it's lasting only four, what's going on? And that's what we call motor fluctuations. But sometimes during that period in which the medication works, you start having involuntary movements. And you may see others with Parkinson with that movement. And we call that dyskinesia. And that means that you are having perhaps an excess of the medication dopamine in your system. But then after a year, you may get some resistance symptoms. Doctor, I'm having freezing of gait. My feet get glued to the ground. And even if I take my, my, my medication, that seems, it still happens. Or sometimes my balance is getting worse and starting to fall. So these are difficult symptoms that sometimes are not help uh, with uh, carbidopa, levodopa. And then after 15 years or even longer, you may start feeling more like a cognitive problem that Dr. Margoleski was talking about, including hallucinations. So, and then we go into this on and off, right? So what is off is lack of medication effect. Off means if you take your pill and you feel no medication effect or not the best medication effect, you're really off. On means that you're taking your pill and you're feeling good. You're feeling that you're supposed to feel. So, and there are multiple forms of off and on, and I'm gonna go into that, but the most common is called wearing off, on which the patient feels that before the next dose, the symptoms are appearing again. So that's the first one, usually. But that gets complicated. Sometimes the patient gets sudden off, like that they are on the best moment and all of a sudden the effect of the medication disappears. Sometimes they take a pill and there is no effect at all. Uh, and they call uh, that uh, 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 dose failures. So, and then we go uh, as years pass into this up and down and we call that roller coaster, right? So the patients take a medication initially and early on the disease and the medication goes up and then uh, you have an excellent effect and you are on the window that Dr. Hack was mentioning. But the window, you see the window is getting like a triangle, it's getting, getting smaller. So as time passes, you, you see what happened here. For example, the patient takes the medication here where the arrow is, and it takes some time, and you see the time on, the, on, on pink, to the medications just start working, that we call that delay on. So it takes like a, maybe half an hour, sometimes an hour to start working. And then the medication works, and then when you are feeling okay, then you start having involuntary movements because maybe it's too much and that's the, that's the yellow. And then you go down into a situation in which again, the medication works fine. And then finally the effect disappears before you even take, a, before it's time for the next pill. So that's the wearing off. And as the disease progresses, the window gets worse and then you get more complicated. And then uh, pay attention to this because, for example, this is a patient that took a, a, a pill on each arrow. And you see three arrows there. He took the pill at 7, at 1 p.m., at 7 p.m. And you can see that, for example, after 7, the medication goes up and then goes down around 9, 10, 10 a.m. The patient's medication is too low. So the patient may feel already starting to wear off and then clearly off between noon and 1 p.m. when is the next dose. But then the interesting thing comes is that he takes the pill at one and then the pill doesn't have any effect. And you can see this from one to three or 4 p.m. is that when the medication starts kicking in again, and we call that delay on. 
So think of this time as time on which you cannot do your best activities on that day. So you are wasting this time. So you are accumulating what we call off time, and that's not good. So why that happened, uh, Dr. Hakkoli talked about that. So one possibility could be that you're taking protein meals and the protein is blocking the absorption of medications. But just remember that the Parkinson's, and Dr. Singer is in mention about that, Parkinson's also damage nerves outside your brain. So it may destroy, damage the nerve that go into the stomach. The nerves on the stomach are important because when you take your pill, the stomach has to contract to move the pill to the next portion, which is the intestine, where the carbidopa levodopa is absorbed. So if the stomach doesn't move, then your pills will sit there and then they won't work. And then you're just waiting half an hour, one hour. Doctor, I took the pill one hour ago. Nothing is happening. This gentleman took the pill one hour and a half before. And then he felt no improvement whatsoever with the pill. He said, okay, maybe the pill is, is broken or, or maybe it's expired. So they did an uh, endoscopy of the patient. So they put a camera down the mouth of the patient, look at the stomach, what's going on? And what, look, look what they found. The pill is sitting there after an hour and a half. That's not supposed to happen. So the immediately should pass to the intestine. So, and that's because the nerves on the stomach are not moving properly and there's, the pills are sitting there. So there are multiple medications to treat the symptoms. And I think Dr. Hack went through all of those. We call it a menu. Uh, carbidopa levodopa being the star, the main medication. But when the carbidopa levodopa doesn't glass enough or have problems, so we have others to the rescue, like dopamine agonists, like uh, these other medications, the inhibitors, that what they do is uh, block chemicals that destroy naturally the dopamine. So they will extend your life of the dopamine. It will last longer, et cetera. So what happens if you have wearing off? What, what would you wish well, doctors usually do? So what happens if the medication doesn't last enough? We have several options. Of course, number one, we give you more often. We use a pill more often. So instead of taking the carbidopa levodopa three times a day, we say, okay, take it four times a day. Or we ask you how long it lasts your medication, three hours. Okay, three hours, so you have to take it five times a day to cover your day. But then you may end up taking too many medications that they will be interfered with the protein because you have to eat, right? So, so then another option, another strategy is, well, we can give you medication that may extend the duration of the carbidopa levodopa. Instead of giving you more often, we'll give you medication that make it last longer. And this is the list. Dopamine agonists, the inhibitors that block the destruction of the dopamine. And then there are some one called A to A receptor antagonists. I will talk later about that. And the other option is to give you a medication that is a carbidopa levodopa itself, but it lasts longer. And then the, the main a, a, a representative here, a, the newer representative is called Raitari, which is a carbidopa levodopa itself, but it lasts longer. A, it's an extended release medication. And there is one that the same company is doing as working on, it's called IPX203, which is still under investigation, that even, even lasts longer than the Raitari. So, but we'll see the results of the study. So we're gonna go through uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, medications here. Uh, I don't see the titles for some reason. Okay, so this one, uh, uh, let me check. Very good. So this medication uh, is called safinamide. Uh, and then this uh, is one of these medications that I told you that may extend the duration of the life uh, of, the, uh, of the carbidopa uh, uh, levodopa. So it comes on doses of 50 to 100 milligrams per day. It was studied and look what happened. So uh, it increased your own time. On time means the time on which you feel good uh, by 1.5 hours uh, 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 versus just half an hour and increase uh, when the patient were given placebo, meaning the fake uh, medication. So it was approved by the FDA on March 2017 as an adjunctive treatment for patients with Parkinson that are experiencing this episode of uh, wearing off. So that's one medication to keep in mind. It's one tablet a day and may extend the life of your carbidopa levodopa. So what else we have? So we have another one called uh, estradephylin, also uh, manufactured under the name of Nurians. And then here's the interesting thing. Uh, most of our medication that extend the life of the dopamine work just on dopamine, but this one doesn't. Our brain is very interesting, it's like a car. So, and we have two pedals, right? On your car, you have the gas pedal and you have the brake pedal. 
So dopamine is like the gas pedal. So when you give more dopamine to somebody, so your car will go, go faster. So you will move faster and better. But we also, in our brain, have a break. Our brain also have a break. So, and then uh, if we, uh, and if this break is also there, and it's also controlling involuntary movements. So this medication, what it does is, what do you think? It releases the break of the brain. So it doesn't work on dopamine at all. It doesn't speed you up pressing the gas pedal, but it helps you speed you up just removing the break. So just by removing the break, you are not touching dopamine and you are improving your movement. And then the study was done and it reduces the off time by an average of one to one and a half hours per day. Again, this is time, more time for you, one and a half hours that you can do more things eh, 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 per day. And this comes on very convenient once a day dosage. The other medication is called Opicapone. It was recently released, FDA approved on April 2020. It's a once a day medication. Again, you take it just one at night, usually 50 milligrams at night. And what it does is extend the life again of all the carbidopa levodopas that you take through the day and for at the very least two hours per day. And that was approved by the FDA. It's very convenient. Uh, and you can see here, for example, the reduction on off time. So less off time with taking placebo, not too much. But when you take the OPIC upon 50 milligrams, you see that 120 minutes reduction on the off time. So it's a good medication to add when you're having those problems. And here we go. This is Raitari. This is the extended release Carbidopa Libodopa, already six on the market. It was approved on 2015. And what it does, it lasts longer. So here we have a curve, and then you will see that the light gray, just follow my arrow, the normal carbidopa levodopa, when you take it, it goes up on your blood, and then immediately follow this curve, this gray curve, and then goes down, especially when you have advanced Parkinson's. So it means that it only lasts maybe two, three hours, and that's it, you start feeling the off. So what this medication does, the Raitari, is what it does is you take it, it gives you the nice peak, but then stays there. And then you can see after maybe four, four hours, five hours, it starts going down. So it lasts longer than the regular Carbidopa Lipodopa. So you don't have to take too many tablets per day to just fill your day. So it improves usually the on time, doesn't give you trouble, so dyskinesia sometimes, uh, and it allows you to reduce the number of doses from five to maybe three or four uh, doses per day. And improve your off, on time around two hours per day. So you get two more hours of your day per, uh, uh, with this medication. But when, when medications don't work very well, uh, and then for example, let's say you are here attending to a nice meeting, and all of a sudden, the medication, your carbidopa levodopa that you took maybe three hours ago, the effect disappears. And then you say, okay, what I'm going to do? I'm starting to shake. I'm getting very slow. Now I cannot go to the bathroom. So what can I do? Rescue. Rescue medications. So these are medications that you will take or inject. Uh, and then what they do is they quickly work. Maybe 10, 15 minutes, you will feel that the medication is working again. And they will pass you from off to on quickly, but during a short period of time. So it doesn't replace your medications. It just is an add-on for you to be in control. So now you can go to the movie theater, you can go to a trip, you can go on vacations and have this on your pocket. And if you develop the off time, you immediately may go to on without people knowing it because on 15 minutes, you will be back to on. Which are they? So there are three. The oldest is the apomorphine injection. Uh, uh, that you will have to self-inject yourself in the skin. Uh, the other one is the same apomorphine, but on a sublingual film, it's like a, li like a listerine uh, that you will put under your tongue and it will dissolve and in 15 minutes you will get on again. And then the other one is the levodopa, similar than the carbidopa levodopa, but this time on an inhaler. That you will have your inhaler in your pocket you're off, you inhale, uh, usually two capsules come with capsules that uh, uh, are perforated and then have a powder inside that goes into your lungs. And from that lungs will go quickly to your brain. So quickly you will get your own time. So the idea of this rescue is that now the patient is back in control of the Parkinson's. I know that, I know that Parkinson's controls where activities you can be uh, attending or not. So this is the sublingual film and you can see the significant difference. 
So down is better. So when the, you give placebos or nothing to these patients or the fake uh, film, nothing happened uh, with improvement on the symptoms. When you give the, 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 the real film, you can see how the improvement on the symptoms increase, increase, increase. And you, and you, and you can see how it starts increasing around 15 minutes. And then it gets better at 30, 45, and 60 minutes. But of course, it's not going to last longer than one and a half, two hours. And then uh, it's just a rescue medication. You can use it up to five times per day uh, uh, as needed, no? as needed. And it was FDA uh, uh, also approved very recently. Uh, so the, uh, the other medication is the inhaler. It comes with capsules because you have to put the capsules into the inhaler uh, for the medication to be delivered to your lungs. It's very easy to use. It's, it doctors will, ha will have to train you on the office. Usually they have a kit that is a fake kit to train you how to use it. But the same idea, right? So if you take placebo, it means a fake inhaler, nothing will happen or no match will happen. And you use the embryo, your symptoms will immediately improve. The curve will reduce, meaning your symptoms are reducing. Um, and what about uh, advanced therapy? So let's say we do all of this and then you still have problems. Doctor, still, I use that now, the right tari, let's say, but it doesn't last longer. Uh, I still have these kinesias. Uh, I still have problems. So then we go into what we call advanced therapy. And what is advanced therapy? There are two elements. One is pumps. Yes, pumps for Parkinson's disease. So, and the other one is brain surgery. Brain surgery is gonna be discussed later uh, uh, by Dr. Luca and Dr. Dalby. Uh, that includes the brain stimulation and what we call focus ultrasound, but I'm gonna concentrate on pumps. Uh, and then there are big pumps and small pumps. And of course, as time passes, as technology develops, the pumps will get smaller and smaller, but this is the first pump that we had, it's called Duopa, and it's the, uh, it, it connects to you thanks to uh, a tube that goes to your intestine. And that you've got exactly on the intestine where that normal carbidopa ligodopa gets absorbed. So it doesn't pass to the stomach anymore. So it doesn't deliver the carbidopa on the stomach. So, which is fantastic. So, but look at the size of the pump. The pump it has two parts that controls on the top and the bottom is where the liquid carbidopa ligodopa will be there. So that's the medication that's gonna pump continuously through a, 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 the tube into your intestine. So if you were having the roller coaster like this, now you will be nicely even through the day. So you will get back all of this off time back to you to do your activities. And you will have a button, which is an emergency button that if during the day you have a little off, you can push it and immediately it delivers extra, the extra dose, and then you will be back to on time. Again, that's the convenience. The inconvenience is, well, doctor, I have to have a, a little tube place on my stomach. Uh, yes. And then you have to take care of your tube. Uh, so because of that, there are other pumps that are being developed that are more subcutaneous, meaning here the medication goes through a small tube on the, uh, with a needle in the skin. It doesn't go to the intestine. We just go in the skin, deliver the medication under the skin. And from that moment, the medication will go find its way to your brain. And this is a pump that we don't have here in the United States yet. It's called Apogo pump uh, that is being tested on Europe and it's being efficacious. Hopefully uh, soon we will have it here. This is the first pump uh, that is called Duopa, uh, the Libodopa pump that you see very effective. Reduce your off time by two hours per day and give you two more hours of on time. So more hours for you to do things plus the convenience of not having to leave the roller coaster the whole day and being even on the medications. Uh, 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 so the, the problems of the pump, well, the main problem is problems related to the, uh, uh, the tube, the you tube that you have, that sometimes patients complain that, that the tube is moving, that there is a little redness around the tube. But of course, with practice and being connected with your GI doctor, that you will learn how to manage the tube and the pump. The only other thing that is important is you need some help uh, uh, in the morning. Usually this pump is connected to you first in the morning when you wake up, and then it's disconnected from you just before you go to sleep. At night when you're sleeping, they, we can give you an extended release carbidopa levodopa. So if you are very off and very rigid in the morning when you're uh, uh, waking up, you may need somebody to help you connect the pump and push the button. So then the medication will start going and then you're gonna be on the whole day. 
So this is the other pump that we were talking, very uh, smaller compared with the first one, that is the apomorphin pump. It's not available in the United States, but again, it has the same studies. And you can see here, uh, 2.5 hours less of uh, off time per day. Uh, uh, so, which is fantastic. That means that all goes back to your, 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 your number of hours that you are productive during the day. Uh, and then, there are other subcutaneous pump because now uh, patients want something that doesn't go to the intestine. So, and there are uh, several, uh, several laboratories that have been testing pump that just go into the skin. And there were problems there uh, because uh, levodopa has problems when it has to be delivered into the skin, technical problems. Let's say it's difficult for levodopa from the skin, it gets enough amount in order for, for, to supply your day. So, but this over time, they were uh, 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 studied and then the technology improved. And now they are being studied. This is a study ongoing with a medication produced by a company called Neuroderm. The medication is called ND0612 that is delivered by two tubes that go in the skin, no into the intestine. And then there are a, the preliminary studies showing that reduce your off time by almost three hours and give you three to four more hours of on time per day. So it's remarkable compared with, for example, pills. But of course, you will have to use a pump. So, and this is another uh, pump that is uh, coming from AVI, which is the same company that produced Duopa, uh, that is being studied, in which now the, what they you do is they introduce in the liquid, no Libodopa itself, but just a medication that will get transformed into Libodopa easily. And then the study, you can see the lines. The lines on red are somebody taking the Carbidopa Libodopa. So every time you take it, it goes up and it goes down. Then you take it again, goes up, goes down. And you can see the difference with the line on blue. The patient that were using the pump, they are even through the day. No up and downs, no, they're fine. So, so that is a, a still a, a being studied. This is still premature, but it will be maybe in the market soon. So you will have to start listening to this, uh, where that goes. And then a few words about these kinesias. These kinesias are this involuntary movement that some patients have when the medication goes too high. And that happens usually as the disease progresses. Uh, if they are very mild, uh, we don't use, when you use any medication, we just observe, tell the patient, don't worry, this is part of the disease. Uh, if they are mild, they, are, they don't interfere with you, there is no reason to treat. But of course, if they are bothersome, they interfere with your life, though you may need medications. Uh, one option is to reduce your dopamine medications. So if it's too much, then reduce the dopamine, but you may not be able to tolerate that because you will say, well, doctor, I reduce it, but now I am off. So if that's the case, we use something, what we call anti-dyskinesia medications. So medication that you will add to your list to control dyskinesias and to allow you to continue using the same dose of carbidopa levodopa that keeps you on. So in, in, when these strategies fail, so deep brain stimulation, they will talk, Dr. Luca will talk about later, will be a, an option. So, and there is a medication that all this medication for this kinesia was called amantadine. And it was our friend for many, many years and we use it. But we, over time, discovered it has some problems. It, it, it requires a certain level in order to be very effective. And then when we give it, like usually we give it three times per day, usually those levels are not achieved. And then here's an example. Somebody that takes a amantadine six in the morning and look, the level is a little low. And then you, when you take your second dose, let's say at 3 p.m., then the, the, the level goes a little higher. But the level in order to work should be around here, should be where the green line is. So because of that, a pharmaceutical company a, a, a developed this a, a medication called Gocobri, which is an amantanin extended release that is not just an extended release. You take it at night. It doesn't do anything at night and then uh, start increasing your level. Four hours later, you take it, it starts dissolving and start increasing your levels of amantadine. So by the time you wake up, your levels of amantadine are high and then good enough to control your dyskinesias. Stay there during the day and at night goes down, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. So this is a very good medication that is uh, approved by the FDA as an anti-dyskinesia in 2017. But we also learned that it may also improve your off time. It may give you less off time in addition to control these kinesias. And, and you can see here on the diagrams on the right, and you can see somebody taking, for example, a, a placebo here on the, on the, on the more, uh, on the uh, far uh, right. 
for example, the on time of this patient was nine hours, but when they took the, the recovery, it increased to 12.2 hours. So it's not like just reduces your dyskinesia, but it may give you more on time, reduce your off time. And because of that, the FDA gives it a, another label that it can be used also as an adjunct treatment to reduce your off time. And that was approved on 2021. So what else you can do? Well, we already talked, we already heard uh, Emily talking about the exercise uh, on, it's on different varieties, dance, boxing, uh, music therapy, and you hear music here in the morning. Uh, you can, you, you're gonna hear about cannabis, even though it's not studied on patients with Parkinson's and any other question we'll, we'll take later. Therapies, and then as Emily was mentioning, physical therapy, but also occupational therapy to improve your activities and speech and swallowing therapy when your volume or your voice is too low or when you have some swallowing problems. And then of course, uh, helping the patient with aids, uh, canes, walkers, scooters, etc. Uh, uh, as needed uh, if they need some point uh, uh, during the disease. Uh, so we talk about a lot of things on the pipeline, but there are multiple things on the pipeline to slow down Parkinson's medication that may uh, work as vaccines and slow down the disease, other medication that we are uh, actually part of the trials uh, called NLY01 that may slow down Parkinson's and others, uh, including genetic therapies uh, that being studied and also new medications, new versions of extended release carbidopa levodopa that are down the pipeline, new medications called A2A inhibitors. Remember the one that released the break from you, new antidiskinesias medications. One of the studies are gonna be done on Boca Raton on my site. So you're interested and have these kinesias, let us know. New pumps coming, gene therapy, which is still experimental, and stem cell therapy, which has been heard a lot, but uh, is still experimental, uh, not really to be applic uh, applicable for uh, humans. So with that, I finish my presentation. Hopefully you like it and learn something.